Parents, kindergarten, school, they prepare our children for life. Society is increasingly being organised digitally. When should children start using a tablet or a smartphone to be well prepared for life? All parents are faced with this decision. In order to survive in an increasingly digitalised world, children have to learn how to use these devices in kindergarten. That's what many parents believe. But many media educators are of a completely different opinion, and scientists such as the renowned brain researcher Gertraut Teuschert Nord are horrified by the sensory overload through media. Yeah, was what we are currently experiencing in our society causes feelings of great concern in me. We have half a century of research behind us, including the ones in our own institute at Bielefeld University. How stress factors affect child and youth development and now digitization. We reckon that the degree of acceleration will have such an effect as we have found, brain development cannot proceed normally. The balance of brain functions cannot be utilised in the development, and children fall by the wayside. The ability to think decreases, addiction arises. There's no way around it. It is a disaster that's happening now. Only people who have grown up with analogue can cope sensibly with the digital world. This is the important message from modern brain research. The increasingly digital new world that lies ahead of us is developing in the wrong direction. We let ourselves be dazzled and often succumbed unsuspectingly to the hype and fascination. Humans automatically develop intelligence when given the opportunity for normal psychological brain maturation. These include from the earliest childhood. Motion, emotion, motivation. Motion is the basis for the first maturing neural systems. The artist, namely the child itself, designs a first sketch for its own artwork. The child itself doesn't know anything about it. It simply enjoys crawling and discovering, jumping and romping, experiences in and with nature, such as building sandcastles. The child does not learn at all, in contrast to what most adults imagine. The concept of learning is downright inappropriate in the context of early childhood development. The toddler can't help but use open senses to soak up all the experiential impressions like a sponge and integrate them into maturing nerve networks. Motion is activity. This is the necessary food that the nerve cells need, such as proteins and carbohydrates, to constantly feed the nerve cells. Only through movement is the maturation of a positive emotion and motivation in the child's brain set in motion. But by tapping and swiping the screen of a tablet, you cannot compensate the enormous activity that the child needs during its development. Instead, the desire to move is lost due to the seductive fascination of the digital toys. The biologically anchored drives of exploration, curiosity, imitation, play and creative invention are not or not used enough. They run the risk of atrophying and there is a lack of social communication no viable motor-driven nerve framework can develop in the brain. How come what the child sees is two-dimensional? You can't touch it, you can't taste it, you can't smell it, you can't feel it. So if it deals with digital media, it cannot have concrete sensual experiences that are so important for logical thinking. A child cannot learn to balance. A school child can probably only hold a pen cramped with his fist. Writing, reading and arithmetic are difficult to learn, and thus the development of intelligence is put into question. Modern parents and educators want to be progressive. They want the best for their offspring. 
when they introduce them to the technical world at an early stage, but they don't know that they're putting them in a digital straitjacket and that mental development disorders are inevitable. Neuroplasticity is the key to understand how human beings learn. Like footprints in the sand, all learning processes leave their imprints in the networks of our nerves of the cerebral cortex. Digital activities do this too, but they steer the child's behavioural development into a dead end. For more than 25 years, from 1980 to 2005, Miss Toyshot Nord worked as a neuroscientist and human biologist at the Bielefeld University in research and teaching. From a scientific point of view, ideal conditions prevailed. Free, independent research was hip. Motivated students flocked to neurobiology, which orientated itself towards human biology, and at that time entered the decade of brain research worldwide. Analysis techniques were so mature that sophisticated functions such as mechanisms of learning and psychosis formation could be investigated neurochemically and systemically with the help of quantitative image analysis. Using an animal model, the frontal brain and the limbic system were investigated. Together, these two systems control the highest brain functions, i.e. the formation of will and memory, thinking and social behavior. Large parts of the cerebral cortex are brought to life via motor-driven activities, and so the child's behavior at play prepares the breeding ground for learning how to speak, write and think. However, if the child watches stories and plays scenes on the tablet, it lacks its own activities. The nerve networks get into a state of deprivation. Also, brain rhythms cannot be sufficiently activated. This clearly corresponds to a malnutrition of neurons. These deficits lead to sleep and concentration disorders and can only be smoothed out with great difficulty. One point five million years ago, our ancestor, Homo erectus, existed. He had a very flat frontal brain. Only Homo sapiens, sapiens reached this strong bulge. The attribute sapiens means a sage, the smartest among all earthlings. However, every modern human child first has to laboriously develop this characteristic. Consider the grandiose advanced civilizations that modern man has created. Every human child is reoriented to this, physically and mentally. First together with parents or educators, then independently. It took the brain 1.5 million years to be able to develop sophisticated cultures. It took Homo erectus this time to make the evolutionary leap to Homo sapiens. The ingenious genetic move was to extremely slow down the maturation, especially of the frontal brain and to couple this with an enlargement of associative bark fields. In other words, to increase memory and improve creative rational thinking. Only in the spatial anchoring of the child's behaviour did mankind have the chance to act much more flexibly and adaptively, but also more mindfully and considerately, more socially than all other living beings. But if a child is tranquilized with the help of a tablet and a smartphone, and it carries a mobile phone around as, as a playmate and communicates with it, its innate desire to have a real playmate will soon be extinguished, as well as the desire to independently look for solutions in conflict situations. 
to learn to live with uncertainties or to cope with small natural fears. The child remains connected to the digital umbilical cord. Many areas of the brain will be undersupplied and atrophied. Instead, autistic behaviours develop. A digital anxiety syndrome can arise. Today, many children are disorientated and helpless without the smartphone. Professor Toyshat Nord's research continues. Together with the psychologist Angelika Schlottmann, children from the third grade of the primary school were first asked about the intensity of their mobile phone, tablet and computer use in a first pilot study. Later on, the eight to nine-year-olds had to fulfill tasks that they had previously practiced. As we see in here, so we see here how the third grader writes snowball fight into these fields. And then we see here in the back that he states that he plays a lot on the mobile phone, on the PC and television. And then we have a second example of a child who is much better but plays very little. And another child... She can do it too. She also plays little digitally. She's also good at this. She plays nothing at all. And then we have a child. He tried it this way, but he also plays a lot. The pilot study dealt with the fact that we want to measure this space-time calculation regarding the frontal brain competences, as you have just seen. The children write the word snowball fight into a space and are supposed to fit it in and there are very big differences and they are also significant. So you have here the frontal brain competences depending on the private mobile phone use. You have a significant result which is already very surprising and also questionable. And we have to publish that and do further studies including long-term studies. If it turns out that the mobile phone use has such a big impact on frontal brain skills, then we must act. These are our children out there. Digital addiction is constantly increasing amongst our children. Digital addiction is no different from drug addiction. The digital fireworks of fast videos and colourful animations trigger a stimulus bombardment that descends on the neuronal metabolism, the transmitters in the limbic system and frontal brain damaging nerve networks. The important finding through sensory overload, the addiction burns itself into the brain The fact is that more and more children and young people are becoming addicted to smartphones with dramatic consequences. In many practices, specialists see every day that the use of digital media leads to conflicts within families. Many young people find it difficult to find the right balance. Parents report that excessive media use already leads to aggressive behaviour in the under 10 year olds. Social withdrawal, unrealistic body image, with eating disorders, attention deficits, and delayed motor and language development. Therapy often shows that children need an indispensable feeling of trust, security, and security in intensive relationships, so that circuits in the limbic brain regions can develop in real life. When working with adults, it's becoming increasingly clear why the brain can never really adjust to real time and multitasking. Things that are demanded in the modern workplace today, medial simultaneity, this contradicts the brain's own mechanisms, which makes work processes unstructured and superficial, plunges an overwhelmed brain into insomnia and lack of concentration, then into burnout and depression. The 
cancer researcher and president of the U.S. Consumer Protection Organization, Environmental Health Trust, discusses another problem. People have a right to know that cell phones are two-way microwave radios, that they're not toys, that they should never be given to children for any length of time. If you must give a child an electronic device, download what you want them to see, if it's a movie or a game, and put it on airplane mode. That way you reduce, eliminate the microwave radiation. People have a right to know that you can protect yourself by using airplane mode, that when a phone signal is weak, you should not use a phone unless it's a true emergency, because the phone is smart and it will use more radiation, and half of the radiation from a phone gets into you, so long as the phone is in your pocket or next to your body. Which is why the manufacturers tell people that they should not use a phone within five millimeters of the body. Environmental Health Trust says that's not enough distance. It should be much further away, uh, a few inches. But overall, we want people to know that cell phones are microwave devices and they need to be treated with care. And we need to work to make sure that the technology becomes safer and that we come up with ways to use them that are safer for our children and my grandchildren as well. Education for media maturity must become a subject at school. From the age of 14, the children should take a smartphone test similar to a driving license. Lack of exercise, sensory overload, addiction and radiation exposure. We can take countermeasures. It's up to parents, teachers and educators to inspire our children for exciting alternatives so that they can make music, sing, play sports, play theatre, romp with friends in nature, hike and climb and become enthusiastic about nature. This well-known media guide for all ages is now available internationally. Growing up healthy in a world of digital media is an initiative for the promotion of competent and age-appropriate use of digital media by children and adolescents. For the support of parents, schools and other people affected and for networking with experts and specialist institutions.